It's hard to imagine a world without caffeine, but caffeine didn't always exist. However, a molecule in plants called xanthocene did. And over time, a few plants began to make a series of tweaks to their xanthocene molecules, eventually turning them into the bitter neurotoxin known as 1,3,7-trimethylxanthine. <sighs> Which, holy cow, that's a mouthful. So let's instead just call it by its common name, caffeine. Hi, I'm Cameron. I'm Kate. I'm David. I'm Henry. And this is Minute Earth. Caffeine provided a huge boost for those plants. When insects bite into caffeinated leaves and buds, the bitter taste sends many of them running. The few that keep chewing either get confused by the molecule's neurotoxic effects and wander off, or they consume a lethal dose and die a jittery death right there. Well, except for the coffee borer beetle, which can withstand the caffeine equivalent of an average person binge drinking 500 espressos, thanks to some advantageous gut microbes. But caffeine wasn't just a good pesticide, it was also a good defense against other plants and fungi. When caffeine-laden leaves and seeds fall to the ground, the molecule both slows the growth of nearby competitors and stops new plants and fungi from growing. But if caffeine were simply a poison, we wouldn't be talking about it right now. Many caffeine-producing plants also put tiny amounts of caffeine in their nectar, not as a poison, but as a treat. These are amounts small enough to be non-bitter and non-toxic, but still powerful enough to have psychotropic effects on an insect. It sounds kind of like a bad idea, but it turns out to be an effective pollination strategy. Caffeine actually improves bees' memories, making them more likely to remember the location of a caffeine-laden flower. It also makes them quite addicted to caffeinated nectar, which encourages the bees to make repeated visits to caffeinated flowers, which, in turn, means the bees are more likely to spread pollen from those flowers. The way caffeine does this is pretty straightforward. Normally, this molecule, adenosine, builds up in a bee's brain, binds to certain neuron receptors, and triggers a series of chemical reactions that makes the bee sleepy. But when caffeine binds to those receptors, it blocks the sleepiness molecules from binding and triggers its own chemical reactions that get the bee buzzed instead. Humans probably weren't caffeine's intended target, but our underlying physiology is similar enough that caffeine has a delightfully similar effect. And we have a long history of exploring those effects. 3,500 years ago, ancient Mesoamericans likely made the first caffeinated drinks from cacao beans, and tea was discovered not long after, about 3,000 years ago. Compared to those, coffee and cola consumption are relatively recent discoveries, tracing their origins back only about 1,000 years. In our endless war against drowsiness, humans now produce 7 billion kilos of tea and 9 billion kilos of coffee each year, and more than 90% of folks drink some form of caffeine daily. This means that not only has caffeine helped certain plants become some of the most prolific species on the planet, it's also turned a beverage into a key element of the daily functioning of modern human civilization. Which is why we made this mug for you. Literally, you can get this mug, but with your own mug on it. I mean, your own custom stick figure because you too are part of Caffeine's success story. And for a limited time, when you join our Patreon at the $6 a month tier or higher, you will not only be supporting us and get a custom mug as an additional perk, get it? You'll also get a digital download of your stick figure, which could make a cameo in an upcoming Minute Earth video. So come help us percolate a pot of new science stories at patreon.com slash minuteearth. We couldn't brew it without you.